Rod Coronado is a well-known Native American activist who participated in direct actions with the Earth Liberation Front and Animal Liberation Front during the 1990s. He spent four and a half years in federal prison after he was convicted of aiding and abetting arson at a Michigan State University research facility. The fire destroyed years of data that was used to benefit the fur industry. <laughs> talk about Rod Coronado. Rod Coronado was a member of Sea Shepherd and uh, also active with Earth First, um, active with the Animal Liberation Front. to Animal Liberation TV. So I'm continuing with the Memories of Freedom zine. Um, chapter 4. This is the ALF, the Youth Take Charge. And this is part 2 because I read a, the first couple of pages out of that and it was uh, a lot of really impressive actions that were starting to take place, wasn't it, over the US. And the FBI had started taking a big interest because I think there was four actions in one night against some labs and stuff, wasn't there? And then we heard about Earth First being infiltrated by some FBI. Okay, so there's not much to read of this one. So, <clears throat> in 1990, power lines were toppled on Earth Day in Watsonville, great name for a town, <laughs> California, to dramatise the dependence on coal and oil burning power plants which fed on indigenous people's lands and contributed to carbon dioxide emissions. 1990. Oh, God, and we're still talking about climate change and everything 32 years later, and there's wars over oil and gas and everything. Oh, dear, not much has changed, has it? It's <laughs> oh, a shame. Um, <clears throat> his action was later allegedly connected to the Animal Liberation Front. Following the... Earth Night Action Group's power outage, Earth First organisers were the victims of a car bomb that seriously wounded one of the activists. The FBI was quick to arrest the bombing victims, accusing them of transporting explosives, while no investigation was launched into death threats previously received by the Earth First organisers, allegedly from individuals within the timber industry. Ooh, dark. Same sort of story over and over again, though, isn't it? With the things, the authorities are always in cahoots with the enemies and come down on us lot, the, you know, the people protecting the planet or animals. Truly, the 1990s would see a raising of the stakes in defence of Mother Earth and her animal nations. As the FBI hunted warriors for the Earth and animal liberation, people began to realise that this was a struggle that yet again could end in death or imprisonment for its participants. I <clears throat> Within the ALF, divisions began to develop, oh dear, not just over arson, but about media and euthanasia. Sadly enough, some ALF cells believed in killing healthy animals once rescued rather than risk finding safe homes for them. What? <laughs> uh, I remember something about all this. That's really odd, isn't it? Jesus. Hey, already arguments had erupted in the midst of ALF factions between activists who wanted to dump animals rather than carry them away when alarms were triggered or when homes could not be found. What? This is getting weird, isn't it? 
In an ALF raid at the University of Oregon in 1986, eight laboratory rabbits were recovered by vivisectors having been dumped near a road not far from the labs. Ah, that's strange behaviour, that, in my opinion. Anyway, what? That defies, defeats the whole point of it all, everything about that. Anyway, it begins to be apparent that some ALF activists were more concerned with media coverage and acknowledgement of their actions than the animals' lives themselves. Oh dear, some people looking for a bit of a buzz ride without the heart in it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Um, on Independence Day in 1990, the ALF res rescued 100 guinea pigs from Simonson Laboratories in California, only to have some activists advocate dumping the animals when homes could not be found. <laughs> Yeah, strange stuff going on here. This resulted in a further split within the ALF, I bet it did, as the pro-life ALFers took the guinea pigs and spent many weeks finding them so far. Was, yeah, that's the whole point of it all, isn't it? Well, I'm, I'm with that lot anyway. Uh, I'm on my, that side of this, the strange uh, split. Uh, these animals were being given being given by ALF activists who regularly euthanised healthy animals to be rescued from labs while their press releases claimed they had been delivered to safe homes. Oh, what the fuck's that about? Most of these media orientated activists also believe that arson was a tactic that cost public support and drew undue police repression. Well, they're a bunch of weirdos, that lot, full stop. The Western Wildlife Unit, Anarchy Cells and Youth Brigade of the ALF argued that the police repression was only proof that through illegal action, especially arson, the ALF had seriously begun to breed fear amongst animal abusers, not to mention inflict more damage to labs, factory farms and other institutions than strictly animal liberation raids ever had. Yeah. Young voices also came forward and pronounced that if the ALF had begun to justify violence against animals, who could be truly counted on to stop it? <laughs> well, that's kind of what I'm thinking about it. For them and us, liberation meant freedom from a certain death at the hands of humans, be them vivisectors, factory farms or media-hungry animal rights activists. Yeah. Ah, oh, strange stuff. Anyway. The responsibility of the animal liberator did not end when the laboratory was destroyed, but when all of its prisoners were guaranteed sanctuary in safe homes or returned to their native habitat. I Again, so, and then we've got a little picture here. Just do it. <laughs> the classic interfawn of that. Um, right, so that's, that is, I'm going to keep it very brief. Um, and the next chapter is fur farming in America where it starts really uh, describing the incredibly immense and successful and comprehensive campaign uh, the ALF in North America carried out against the fair industry there. So, in the meantime, everyone, take care.